Hi, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm gonna try and keep this intro short and sweet for you guys. So just a quick explanation on the video. It is kind of a hodgepodge of footage, kind of follows a different format than what my normal videos do, but it took me three different attempts uh, to go out and get this video once by myself before I picked up clients, once earlier this week with my client Steve where I had uh, severe audio issues that day. And then the third day uh, yesterday with Jeff and Phil. It was kind of a challenge to get the uh, footage put together, but hope you guys enjoy this one, a video like you'll hear in the intro that I've been wanting to do for a long time on this late fall walleye bite that we absolutely just tear up every single year. So stick around to the end of the video. I've got some exciting news for 2024, as well as going over all the gear and everything that we use in the video. So hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you at the end of the video. Oh. <clears throat> there he is. Came back for it. All right, boys and girls. Finally, welcome back to another video on the channel. A video that I've been wanting to do probably ever since last year um, that I never got a chance to do. And that is catching big walleyes in the late fall, it is the last week of November. Um, it is cold, it was like nine degrees this morning. So I'm out a little bit late waiting for some clients um, for our afternoon rip and thought I'd come out and get another video. It has been a hot minute, I apologize for that, but it's worth the wait, I promise. So I'm gonna try and keep this guy pinned while I grab the net here. That fish bit it once, missed it, and I got him again. Oh, and he came off and I got him in the net. Woo! <laughs> All right. First bite, just kind of been scanning around here a little bit. Bring this guy up here and show you. This is why the late fall period is my favorite, favorite time to catch walleyes because these fish are putting the feed bag on before winter time and they're just packed full of crappies. That fish's belly is so hard. Probably a little bit of egg weight in there too. Well, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to put this guy in the box for a little. It's probably like a 20 and a half. Definitely a good eater that I'm sure my clients will uh, definitely want to eat. Maybe even me tonight, but let's talk about what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it, why we're out here when it's freezing cold, if that's not reason enough right there. See if we can get a couple more. All right. So like I said before, Late fall period, definitely my absolute favorite time to fish walleyes with the exception of April, fresh post-spawn fish. We're kind of doing the same thing. Water temp is 44 degrees despite the cold temperatures the last couple nights. Uh, I think with our temperatures the next few days here, it's gonna kind of remain pretty good like that. But yeah, anywhere from 48 down to 42 is kind of that sweet spot for when I start targeting big fall walleyes like this. Area, location, I'm in between two bends in the main river channel in this reservoir here. There's some days where we're live scoping those big walleyes when they're stacked up over deep water suspended in the channel. But otherwise with high sun and crazy, crazy post frontal conditions like this, those fish are probably gonna be up on the nearby flat. That fish bit me once, I missed it. I got it all the way back to the boat right as it hit that channel break, and that's where I hooked that fish. But name of the game in the fall for me, I'm all about a jig and a plastic. That's a 3A ounce uh, Northland tungsten jig and the uh, classic 2.45 inch B Fish and Tackle Pulsar Chartreuse Orange Core. I'm running that on the 7.2 medium extra fast spinning rod from Kate Outdoors. Absolute favorite rod. Uh, go check out Kurt's rods. He makes some amazing, amazing gear. We've got 10 pound Suffix 832 braid and I do have a uh, 12 pound fluorocarbon leader down to the jig. Just as bread and butter as it gets uh, for a spinning setup and uh, stroking a jig again. Absolute favorite way to catch them. Hopefully we can put a couple more in the boat for you guys because uh, yesterday we did have a real tight window in the morning uh, where those fish were chewing. I think we got four or five. One really, really nice one. I'll put that picture here. But yeah, if you're going to catch an eight to 10 pound walleye in Kansas in the fall, uh, short of the actual spawn when guys are just up on the dam snagging them, late November, early December, uh, even into mid-December, we had a nine and a quarter pounder uh, that one of my clients caught last year. Absolutely incredible fish. Chock full of crappies getting ready for winter time. 
Cannot beat it. So let's see if we can get a couple more uh, before I pick my clients up here in the next hour. All right, well, that was definitely a nice way to start it out there. Definitely might have to eat that one for dinner, but anywho, let's talk technique. So again, I'm just riding right along the edge of the main river channel. There's a big, uh, I'd say it's probably 18 to 22 foot flat out back behind us. And again, like I said before, 90% of the, that time, those fish are gonna be set up right close to the edge. It's pretty seldom that I catch, catch them spread out on the big flat. I always like to be closer, but we let that jig get all the way to bottom. And then from there, especially in this cold water, you're just doing slow, short little pulls right up off the bottom and letting that jig touch bottom every time. You know, in the summertime, we're really cranking that bait up uh, for those reaction strikes. But th with this cold water down there, they're really not wanting to move too much. So I'm keeping that bait as close as I can to the bottom in the strike zone there. You guys watch the tip of my rod. It really only moves maybe six to eight inches at best. And um, that's kind of where you want to be because again, they really don't want to go chasing after baits like they do when the water's warm and their metabolism's higher. So the key is just letting that jig touch bottom every time. That's why the light braid is definitely key in this presentation, super sensitive rod. And I mean, you don't need a tungsten jig, uh, but I really do like tungsten for this technique, especially in deep water. You can feel that jig touch bottom all the way back to the boat. So that's the technique. Uh, I've got another video or two on the channel from earlier this summer where I was doing kind of the same presentation right around Memorial Day weekend, except way up shallow. And um, I mean, it's really no secret. This is bread and butter, walleye fishing 101, learning how to uh, appropriately work a jig. So from there, we just need the fish to cooperate. I haven't really seen so far, maybe in the first like cold spark of this fall, haven't really seen those fish super potted up to where we could just spot lock, but you can kind of like I'm doing, play the wind, spot lock, cast a general area, move up or down the edge of the channel and just try and cover some water. But obviously it would be ideal to get a nice pot of them. So we will just see what happens. But that is the technique, getting good and getting comfortable with the jig presentation and uh, learning how to dial in your cadence. Cadence, I always talk about that a uh, hundred thousand times. I'll talk about it a hundred thousand times more. That is the absolute deal, is just getting your rhythm dialed in, keeping the correct cadence, and uh, the fish will follow. Oh, that's Joe, Never mind. That's my buddy Joe I was talking about last night with the 620. He's also my certified Minn Kota technician. He's fixed every trolling, every issue with every trolling motor I've ever had. What's up, dude? How about we just uh, take a look at him and see? Okay. Well, it did kind of seem like he was kind of squirrely there for a second. If it's a while, I just boat flip him in so fast. Oh, it is too. There's number one, Phil. All right, how about that? Huh? Phil's gonna make my video today. <laughs> number one. A little short. No, that's a perfect, just like we had yesterday. Phil's on the board first this morning. Nice work. Oh, it ain't, you, you're never beating me, Joe, <laughs> ever. If you ever had ice on here, you could ice it. Oh. oh, Phil. Dude, I'm telling you, Phil's gonna make this whole entire video. He's not that big. 
You can still get them though. Remember theatrics. We need it for the video. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. That one's gonna be a little short. Little short. Short one. We'll take them next year. Jeff, you can stop sandbagging us now. I know. I got my two for dinner. There you go. Fish on. Oh, Phil's on. Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. Nice. Still a perfect, perfect keeper, buddy. Nice work. What do we got? Sauger? Let's see. Give me that freaking bait back, fish. Open your mouth. They don't like that, do they? There. Dude. Yeah, that's a perfect fish. Well, Phil is on fire. Phil's on fire. Is that backwards on there? P-H-I-R-E. Exactly Chipping away at him, boys. Chipping away. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching the video is probably like, well, no shit, Sherlock, he's your client. Ah, uh, you can flip him in. Well, we'll bump this one just to get a size reference. Yeah. Number three. Well, welcome to uh, Phil Vogel. <laughs> Fishing. <laughs> Fishing experience, Kansas angling experience. And then, uh, we may see that got, uh, that, uh, percentage split got straight out last night. Fish on. Yep. Fish on. Yep. Fish on. Yep. Phil's on the phone. <laughs> Jeff's on. Yeah, that is a good one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Frickin' pig, buddy. Oh, buddy. That one might almost be too big to want to cut. Let's show this one to the folks at home, shall we? Oh yeah. That's the one that we were waiting for. Nice freaking job, dude. Awesome. How about that? Let's get a picture of that one too. Oh, all right, buddy, here. That's a oh, yeah. That might be your all time record. I think it is. PB? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's what we're here for, boys and girls. Big, big walleyes in the fall. Well, nice. let's take her on a boat ride. So, if we get some more good eaters, maybe we'll just let her go, but she'll stay in there nice for a bit yet. Dude, good work, awesome. man. Awesome. That's big fun. Hell yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, buddy. Nice bite. Thumped it. I saw that out of my peripheral. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Thumped it. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh shit. Crushed that. Dude, I yeah. saw his rod the, tip the rod out of my tip? peripheral, what I have left in my left eye. <laughs> hey, Look at that thing. Look where's that. your bait? <laughs> that bait is gone. Just switched up to the, the yeah. more natural. Oh, natural. Oh, dude. That thing is in there. Here, I gotta get a picture of that down his throat. <laughs> We hit a little bit of a dry spell, but uh, we found the right one. Munched it. Dude, Jeff's on fire with the big ones today. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. <laughs> and that's why we use a fluorocarbon leader. All right, buddy, take your prize. That is the winner. Well, let's get a pick before we... Cool, I'll take her on a boat ride too and we'll see. Might be the start of 
something. Well, like I said, we hit a little bit of a dry spell. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes since our last fish and we've just been sliding around. Came back up to our original zone and that one just freaking crushed it. So we'll see. Whew. All right, well, we got our two big ones of the morning. They're almost cookie cutters. I feel like one's got a little bit more weight to her than the other one. So it's like, which one do we let go? <laughs> but just got a few more pictures here. So yeah, we're gonna figure out which one to let go here. And those are nice fish, bud. Yep. Keep the eaters, let the big girls go. Be ready here in probably just a sec. Oh yeah, buddy. Nice. Very nice. Awesome release. Yeah, I love watching them kick off like that. It's so strong. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Uh, might have been some information overload in the beginning, but if you're gonna take one thing away from all of my explanation, on this fall walleye bite, it is dialing in your jig cadence. Can never talk about that enough and stress how important it is. It will be the difference between you catching fish and not catching fish. All right, so let's recap gear. So 7.2 medium, extra fast, Kate Outdoor spinning rod. Exciting news, I will be working with Kurt uh, for 2024, running the Kate Outdoors rods. Guys, these are made all by hand from Kurt. Nothing coming from overseas. Everything that you see on his website, he is making by hand. Uh, he dropped off a bunch of these rods for me when I was in Green Bay last weekend uh, for the Packers game. So that was super cool. Thanks so much, Kurt. Looking forward to it. So please check out the link in the description below. All these rods retail at 220 no matter what colors or uh, features you choose on the rod i was really excited to get a rod with a full grip i am kind of a sucker for a full grip uh, on a spinning rod here he does have split grip options but on my jig sticks i'm running uh, full grips for next year 2000 size pc fun reel this is a captain unfortunately this uh this reel is discontinued but gonna have a new reel to replace it coming next spring so excited to share that one with you guys as well 10 pound suffix 32 braid 12 pound fluorocarbon leader 3a sounds jig and then uh, whatever your favorite small little paddle tail is. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope uh, you take some information away from this and go out and get yourself some late fall walleyes all the way up to early winter. It's now almost the second full week in December. Uh, water temps are right around 41, 42, and we are still just absolutely hammering walleyes, just gorging themselves silly before the winter period. So if you've got the chance, go out on your favorite local lake or reservoir that is not iced over yet if you're in the North Country and get yourself some walleyes. May try and get another one of these videos done uh, before we transition to crappie. Otherwise, if I cannot, then look forward to some upcoming crappie content because they're starting to group up too. Either way, we're going to try and ramp the YouTube channel back up. We're going to get the podcast back going again. Just kind of needed to step away, take a break and uh, restructure how I wanted that whole thing to go. So I've got some ideas. Uh, it's going to be a fun next couple of weeks here as we kind of get through the holidays. So if I don't see you guys before then, have a great holiday season. Uh, I'm sure that I probably will try and at least get out one more video, but my schedule uh, with guiding and everything is just absolutely crazy. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.